that's what's happening it's will with press start tv and gage we're here with jared moldenhauer uh, jared what's your title here with cuphead uh lead design lead designer with cuphead you guys had a great showing today at the media briefing. Tell us a little bit about this game. Obviously, we know it takes it's a based off 1930s cartoons and all that kind of stuff, but it looks amazing. It, it looked like it plays really well. What's what can you tell us about the game? Uh, I guess it is like both our passions. It's like the mix of the animation, the mix of the classic 8-bit, 16-bit era. We want to bring. Uh, what we know best and what we grew up with and share it with more people. So of course we want to add like a couple new twists to things. So simply like having a super meter, that means every weapon has its own EX and there'll be multiple supers. So you'll also be able to load out however you choose per boss. So mix and match and on two players, you can also then like double mix and match whatever serves you. Now, is there, is there an actual story to the Cuphead, or...? Uh, yes, it's going to be a very light story, very Super Mario World, like an introduction, more about the, the environment, more about like talking to some NPCs, feeling the world out, understanding what the quest is. We didn't want to go the classic, like, save the world or save the character, and for the 30s, all the characters are sort of evil, sort of devious. They're, they're all good-hearted, but they always get into trouble, and that's how the shows wrap up. They're very kind of odd and dark. So basically, we wanted these two guys to be over their head and gambling with the devil, lose it all, and then end up having to side with the devil. Otherwise, they would lose their heads on the contract, but now they have to go around and collect the souls for the devil. They are sort of become their henchmen by circumstance, but of course they find a way out. Sure, very cool. Gage? So, I saw Cuphead for the first time last year at E3, and I was blown away. The first thing that I loved immediately was the style and the graphics of how the game looked. Was that a conscious effort? Was that something that you really wanted to go for? Like, we want to make a game, we want it to look like 1930s cartoons? Oh my god, absolutely. I mean, we love all animation, digital, uh, 3D. We're just like suckers for watching and analyzing a film. It doesn't even have to be good, it just has to have that love in it. But we grew up with 30s and 40s cartoons at our disposal. So the fact that it stuck with us from like age five to now, it was like a, it was a no-brainer. When we went, do you want to animate the game? We weren't like, should we go with an anime style or should this be like a French film? We just went straight 30s, 40s. And it also has that goofy blend more with a video game too. So yeah, it was all hand in hand, no-brainer. Well, uh, speaking on that and making the characters look really good and everything look the same way in the 30s style, how was coming out with the bosses for each stage? Um, like, what was the process in that? Like, coming out with, like, the bee or the boat or anything like that? Uh, a lot of it is a mix of very subtle references. So a lot of games and cartoons we watch have a very light nuance or inspiration for everything you see in the game. Like, lots of just one attack will be a reminder of sort of like the Sega Master System game that we play. So that sets the tone for what we want for the boss. Then after that, it's going through a series of process of making something interesting, something odd. Like you don't want any attack to simply be the bad guy has a gun. Because the 30s, everything sort of happens on the fly. Things just form into things and you have to you just have to accept its obscurity. Like, so within that, it's a large process of come up with an idea, draw out five of them, run it past a few people, run it back to like the animators. <laughs> we all love seeing like a new thing. So even simply like the birds that fly in, there was like birds with military elements. There were birds that had light bulbs. There. there were birds that just looked like a missile. And then, um, I don't remember who did it, I want to say Jake, but there was just a bird with a nail taped onto his body. And then we're like, in the game. Yeah. <laughs> Put yeah. that, make sure it's in there. So that's sort of the process. Okay. 
And one last thing, uh, can you speak on the difficulty of the game? I'm hearing this is comparable to like Dark Souls or something like is, is it very difficult? Dark Souls is a different game. So to say it's Dark Souls hard would be saying it's an open world game where exploring and finding the direction dictates the challenge. It's more old school. Like, give anybody, if they haven't played a run and gun, just throw them Contra 3 on easy with nine lives. Right. And I would love to see anybody beat the first stage. And it's not even anything. So, in the sense, are you saying, is the game hard? Of course, it's hard by the nature of the genre. But it's fair hard. Okay. Anytime somebody takes damage, um, <laughs> You feel like, I saw what happened, I didn't react, so the next time I'm prepared. You don't want something that felt like something just occurred and you've lost. So the more time you put in, the, the easier it will get. Well, Will, I'm all out of questions. Anything you have left? Just one last question. When is the release date of Cuphead? 2025. All right, it's a little ways from now. So. <laughs> it's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, stay tuned for everything E3, Press Start TV. See you next time.